north of India, we fly on to the hidden valleys beyond the snowy ranges. Valleys next door to nowhere. The principality of Hunza lies deep in the world's highest mountains, where the western Himalayas are flanked by the towering Karakorams. We can fly, if lucky, as far as the mountain outpost of Gilgit, then on by trail. At Gilgit, Pakistan Governor Kiani sees them all. Major Steve and the Sarge, escorted by Colonel Mohammed Atola rugged soldier and mountaineer. Thank you very much. Yes. Starting out for Hunza, the happy valley of Hunza, which not many travelers have seen. The golden wheat has ripened early this year in Gilgit, the harvest in full swing. Since the dawn of agriculture, man has threshed his wheat and barley like that. Primitive? Oh yes, but still effective. They can make the first part of the journey in that mechanical marvel of the 20th century, the Jeep. The Major, inspired by the mountain solitudes. The Sarge, hoping the trip won't be too tough. The road is rough, so explains Colonel Atola. But Allah is merciful, so why worry? Mustafa, our Hunza driver, knows every turn of the road, every inch of the way, every loose rock, why he could drive this mountain trail with his eyes closed. But don't you dare close your eyes, Mustafa. hanging bridge there across the swiftly running Hunza River. It's made of twigs and vines tightly braided into thick strands. Each end of the bridge suspended ingeniously between stone towers. Getting across requires the skill of an aerial acrobat. This is an ancient caravan route along which the mountain peoples have carried on primitive trade for centuries. Traversing the Karakorams and Western Himalayas into Central Asia, cities like Yarkhan, Khotan, Bukhara, Samarkand. The Jeep Trail here, a wonder of primitive engineering. In places, mere narrow ledges perched above yawning chasms, often held up only by slabs of stone and heavy boulders. No mortar, just gravity holding up the road, that is, until rains and landslides take out a mile or two. And then travelers sometimes are trapped for weeks. The road 
hardly more than a trail, finally gets to be almost too much for the jeep. Here they stop in awe. Looming before them, Rakaposhi, goddess of the snows, 25,500 feet high, one of the tallest in the Karakoram. village of Sikandarabad and the end of the jeep trail. From here on, it's either a foot or in the saddle. The Hunzakut version of the slingshot, a pebble taking the place of an arrow, accurate and deadly. supplies and equipment, even the latest, well not quite the latest, plumbing facilities. Everything but the shower. Central Asian horses are bred especially for trail work and endurance. Sure-footed, they know their way around the dizzy canyon walls. That is, usually they do. And the Sarge is tired. Hey, wake up, wake up. Some people pick strange places for a snooze. of habitation, an aqueduct overhead, precious water channeled into the few villages along the trail. Travel ends in the shadow of Rakaposhi, never climbed, yet doomed to be conquered eventually like all Himalayan giants.
So the long days of travel continue in order to reach Bolton, capital of Hunza. Here in the Karakorums, the mountains are, on the average, almost twice as high as the Alps, with 60 summits rising above 22,000 feet. Rakaboshi has one wall that drops 19,000 feet from the summit to the valley floor. On shelf-like terraces, the green fields of Hunza. There at the far end of the valley, Baltit, the Hunza capital, still another day away. Hunza, a legended, exciting land in a remote part of a great new nation of Asia, in Pakistan. Ah, this could be it, a land of escape, far from the hustle and bustle of the modern world if you're in search for paradise. Steep for riding, but leave it to the Sarge to find the way. Word has come, travelers on their way to Baltic. So here to welcome them, Prince Muhammad Ayish Khan, brother of the Mir, the ruler of this mountain kingdom. Those are the Mir's children, Crown Prince Chazanfar, offering the customary silver platter laden with fruit. 
in physical type, they are like Southern Europeans. The people of Hunza claim to be descendants of Greek soldiers of Alexander the Great. Welcome to Hunza. Welcome to Hunza. What a beautiful trip we have. Thank you. His Highness is expecting you. Good. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> The royal palace, designed by the mayor himself, built by native craftsmen of the granite and timber of the Hunza Valley. According to tradition, the mayor greets his visitors at the threshold of his home. Your Highness, may I introduce Colonel Ataula and two American airmen. Glad yeah, to meet you, Your Highness. Thank you very much. How do you do, Your Highness? How are you? Welcome to Hunza, please. Please. Thank you. Legend is that the mirrors of Hunza are descended from Alexander the Great himself. Hunza's national game, polo, which they say originated in these regions. Every village has its polo grounds, and often it's the town square. Here in the backyard behind the mirror stable, the children start early to learn the intricacies of polo. My kingdom for a horse might well be the cry for these youngsters. And sometimes it would be easier on the toes. Now for a game between two rival teams choosing up sides with the traditional ritual. Where's the referee? There is none. What are the rules of the game? There are none to speak of. Anything goes short of mayhem. The inter-rivalry between the local villages is fierce and often runs to a fever pitch. In this land of legend, even horses have a legend. Marco Polo, who didn't play the game, tells of horses descended from Bucephalus, war charger of Alexander the Great. The mare riding at full tilt. the ball in flight and you can carry it or pass it to a teammate to carry across the goal line. Polo as they play it in regions where it was born. What do you know? The Sarge has joined the band. Meanwhile, back in the mirror's stable, in the sky and the boy who's always late.
The school, sponsored by the Aga Khan, spiritual leader of the Ismaili sect of Islam, to which the Hunza people belong. Four languages taught, English, Urdu, common in parts of India, Persian, and Arabic. Burushaski, their own Hunza language, is a mystery tongue and has no writing. Four versions of five words, horse, dog, water, sky, bread. Silar and Gredulo, water, water, Urdulo, Pani, Pani, Parsulo, ah, ah, Arabulo, mine, mine, Shabash, and Gredulo, Osman, and Sky, Sky, Urdulo, Osman, Osman, Parsulo, Osman, Osman, Arabulo, Samain, Samain, Shabash, and Gredulo, Shapika, bread, 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 Urdulo, Roti, Roti, Parsulo, Nan, Nan. Arabiyolo Khubzun, Shabash, Ishaq, Hors, Gora, Os, Farasun, Shabash, Muntaz, Ra. School days at Hunza Hieroglyphic High, under Headmaster Sultan Ali. Of work they have their share, like children everywhere. When they're not learning ABCs or arithmetic in Hunza'is, they're playing games or climbing trees, they're stubbing toes and skinning knees, or getting stung by bumblebees in Hunza, Hunza. And how could any mountain paradise be complete without a place to go fishing? Afternoon tea for the royal family in a setting reminiscent of a Renoir painting. The Mir's wife, the Rani, only recently emerged from Purda the veiled seclusion of the Orient, never before photographed. The Mir, educated at English type schools in Gilgit and Royal Pindi. Some years ago, at the invitation of the Aga Khan, the Mir traveled to Europe. His dream now, America. The Hunza cuts are healthy, some live a hundred years. They don't need pills to cure their ills in Hunza, Hunza. The food they eat is simple, they snub the cup that cheers. No alcohol is used at all in Hunza. The health of the people proverbial. Many diseases common elsewhere, unknown here. Marco Polo said that he was cured of sickness by the salubrious air of these mountains. The Hunzakuts produce nearly everything they need. The valley self-sustaining. ancestral castle of the Mirs of Hunza in the village of Altet, where they resided before they moved to Baltet. Just over those mountains, Russian Central Asia and Red China, 
Rapunzel guarded by its mountain ramparts, a Himalayan version of classical Arcadia. Total population, all around 25,000. In this Himalayan lost world, paradise without poverty. Nobody has too little, nobody has too much. There's no one passing laws and acts, no cops, no jails, no income tax. They live and love and just relax in Hunza. To honor his guests, the mirror holds a ceremonial durbar. Outdoors, simple in keeping with his country's economy. Look, back there above the mirror's dais, the curling twisted horns, the ovus poli, named for Marco Polo, the longer V-shaped horns, the ibex. Here the mirror meets every morning with the town elders and headmen of nearby villages. He's the judge and the jury. Complaints concern water rights and grazing privileges mostly. You plead your own case. No lawyers. Utopia. some of them, are the chief men of the villages. A sword dance that recalls the time when the people here were wild raiders and looters. Like a page out of half-forgotten Hunza history. As they depart, our seekers for a land of escape say, yes, indeed, this could be it. Someday, someday we may return. <laughs> <laughs> 